So you're looking for some Christmas gift ideas for that friend, family member, or your other half, and they're a traveler, so you're not too sure exactly what to get them. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some great suggestions, plus you're gonna get a chance to win an AeroPress. Hi everybody, welcome to This World World, my name's Joe and on this channel I aim to inspire, inform and amuse through travel. So I have this short list of Christmas gift ideas for people who are short, medium and longer term travellers and it covers all types of budgets. This is part one of a two part series. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification just so that you don't miss out on part two. So I have a list of gift themes and within each theme I'm going to have two suggestions for you. The first item will be probably chances are something I use already and the second one is probably something that I kind of saw I think is pretty damn cool. There's going to be a link in the description with a timestamp to jump to the different themes just to save you scrolling back and forth on the actual video and because of that you can actually share the link to your friend if you fancy having the gift yourself just to give them a subtle hint. Just a quick disclaimer about the actual product links. They're all affiliate links, which means that a commission is generated every time you guys buy something. And the good thing is there's actually no additional cost to yourselves. And on top of that, any sales generated at Christmas, I'm not gonna be taking it for myself. I'm gonna donate it to a charity. So a small thing about the charitable giving. Um, I must admit, I feel quite grateful to be actually in a situation where it's Christmas time. I'm gonna be going home to, uh, to see friends and family and not everybody has that opportunity. So I'm gonna take any commissions and give it to a charity called St. Mungo's that work to prevent homelessness and support people at every step of the recovery. There's gonna be a link in the description about St. Mungo's if you want to find out more details. And as a personal goal, I'm gonna try and raise a hundred pounds. It's not a massive number, but I don't think this video is gonna get shared that much anyway. So it's just like a good goal to aim for. Any donations you can do through the product links or directly to them will be greatly appreciated by some mangoes, no doubt. And on top of that, I have two AeroPresses which have been kindly donated by AeroPress themselves. You're gonna find out more about AeroPress in a second when I jump it into the description, but effectively it's a coffee press. And in order to win these AeroPresses, all you need to do is to add a comment with your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle. And on the 16th of December, I'm gonna draw it from that list and pick the two winners. You'll have a couple of chances to win. I'm gonna make a part two. So if you add a comment to that as well, you'll have double the chance to win. Plus, if you go to my Twitter, which is this way up and retweet the link to this video, you'll also get an additional chance to win those two AeroPresses. A must for any traveler, a power adapter. Common amongst modern power adapters is that it has a USB adapter, has all the plugs from all, all around the world, and it compacts to something quite small. The one I found that I really like is the Bez power adapter. And it looks like this. So what you have is uh, two USB plugs and di different types of adapters. Now I know there's loads of different power adapters on the market, but you have to be really, really careful. I used to actually have a couple of these different types of power adapters and some of them I actually have blown up. This has been the one that's seemed to have lasted the longest for me and I haven't had any troubles. What I really like about this actually is that it's two LED lights which you can't see at the moment because it's not being used. It's been quite a few times when I've plugged it in thinking, oh, it's charging, but it turns out it wasn't charging because it hasn't been plugged in properly. So yes, that's quite handy. And I love the fact that it's got two USB plugs so I can charge maybe two phones, my iPad or whatever, as well as charging my other stuff with one adapter really really handy the alternative suggestion it actually has four usb adapters so i am a big fan of anchor products they're electronics brand that predominantly sell cables speakers and power banks i just first discovered anchor about four or five years ago and i've been buying cables from them and power banks and actually quite a few different power banks because i keep losing them I've only had good experiences with Anchor. Their products are uh, reliable and not too expensive. Yeah, so don't buy cheap cables because over time it just frays and you don't want to short your electronics. So investing just a little bit more money in quality products will save over the longer term. Now, when it comes to power, I recommend two Anchor products. I recommend the Anchor 10,000 Core, which is a teeny little battery pack that has a massive amount of charge. So it can charge your phone two, three times over, I think, or possibly up to four. It depends on the amperage of your phone. 
I actually recommend buying two of the power cords because they're so small and I personally, when I go traveling around, um, I'm really, really like, clumsy and I always forget to char charge my power banks. So it's nice to, when I do my longer trips, to actually have one as the backup. And sometimes it's just nice to actually have two of these power banks, just so that sometimes you forget to charge one and you have a backup, especially for longer, longer trips. And I have so much electronics gear and it's important for me to have all my stuff charged. And the alternative is the Anker Soundcore Boost 20. It's actually a speaker but the cool thing about this speaker is that it actually acts like a battery so you get sound and power win so I am a big fan of coffee only problem is sometimes when you're traveling around you just can't find good coffee so I want to find a solution to actually travel whilst making good coffee instant coffee I can only deal with so much and I found this the AeroPress absolutely love it so the way it works is that you basically have this little thing that you put a filter in, put that in, and you literally use it as a coffee press and press the coffee all the way down. And there are loads and loads of reviews of the AeroPress all around on YouTube, so I won't bother going over the same thing. But needless to say, this is the... I particularly like using this when I'm doing my city breaks. I've had this one for about five years, so these things last forever. Don't forget, Leave your Instagram or Twitter in the description for a chance to win. Full rules in the description as well. And speaking about drinking, I think I might just take a quick sip of tea. Cheers! So as an alternative to the AeroPress, I recommend a Stojo. The best collapsible cup that you can buy on the market. I love these Stojos. Um, I actually supported them in the Kickstarter. The reason why I love these Stojos comes in like this. All collapsed and then expands to a full cup. So the Stojos actually come in different sizes. So you've got the small one and you've got the bigger one. I definitely recommend getting the bigger one. Now the bigger one is should be for smoothies and whatnot, but I just use it to carry my coffee and it's perfectly fine. I did buy four of these, but unfortunately I managed to lose one of the smaller ones. Small, compactable, easy to wash, and easy to put away. Certain coffee shops, if you actually present your reusable cup, they actually give you a small discount. So for example, if you take a reusable cup to Starbucks, they'll give you a small percentage off the actual uh, coffee, which is great because they are really pushing the whole sustainability and reducing um, pollution and waste. Yay! And in this section, we're gonna be talking about books. Every time I go to a new country, I try, try and get a copy of The Lonely Planet for that country so I can get a local to do some kind of scribble. As an example, I was in New York and actually met a couple of street artists and graffiti artists and they did a couple of scribbles in my Lonely Planet in the different sections. And it just makes it a bit more personal when I travel with an actual guidebook from that area. But the book I'm gonna recommend is The Lonely Planet World Book. This book is a bit of a beast. Now, I would show you but I realized that I think I've actually lent it to somebody, so I have got no idea who I lent it to as well, which kind of sucks, because it's a really, really good book. It's literally got a list of all the countries you can go to around the world. It's got loads of great colorful photos, loads of maps, and whenever I do my medium-term travels, I like to go through the list of countries and see where I can go in that same region. And as an alternative to the Lonely Planet World book, I recommend the Atlas Obscura. Atlas Obscura is started off as a website where they list all these quirky and strange places you can go when you're traveling around and it's great you can actually go to a website right now and just go through their list of some of the coolest places that you would never think these places are definitely off the beaten track so make sure you check it out they also i found out recently have a great youtube channel which is worth subscribing to so i definitely recommend atlas obscura for people who like to do off the beaten track type tours and also generally when it comes to travel books i think they're just fantastic for coffee table books you know they're small, they're quirky, you can pick up, dive in, dive out without spending too much time thinking where you left off and whatnot. So the next one is gonna be really, really obvious, but it's worth mentioning. When I first started uh, traveling, I used to carry like some pretty big books and I very, very quickly regretted it because these big books, oh my God. Anyway, these days you don't have to worry about that. Now you can actually carry millions upon millions of books on a little device like this. Anyway. I have a Kindle, which I absolutely love. The latest Kindles are waterproof up to two meters for like an hour or something, which is ridiculously good. Perfect for going to the beach. And there are loads of options when it comes to buying a Kindle. 
and there's options upgrading from memory to 8 gigs to 32 gigs. 32 gigs is great if you're planning to read magazines and comics. So Kobo is great if you want to break out of the Amazon Kindle universe as it sets more formats than the Kindle and it doesn't restrict what you can actually load into your e-reader unlike the Kindle where it just pretty much locks it away and you have to go through a few more hoops to get stuff onto the Kindle. But I chose Kindle because, well, most of the books I tend to read come straight from, um, straight from their Amazon Kindle uh, store. I might just do a separate video doing a more of a deeper comparison between the Kobo and the Kindle. If that's, if that's something that interests you, then let me know. Oh, and also, just in case you're wondering about my very, very lovely case. I love my case. It's got like a nice, pretty a world map on. I'll add a link in the description. And the great thing about this particular company is that they have loads of different types of designs. So that's it. That's the end of part one of my short list of Christmas gift ideas. Don't forget, if you want to win one of two error presses, make sure you add in the comments your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle. The deadline is the 16th of December. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell button so you don't miss any more videos and part two. And I'll see you at the next video. And my no don't read me far so last. I don't believe I forgot to put on my Christmas hat. Oh well, I'll make sure to remember for part two.